Once you realize how you need to look at things, it's not a terribly difficult problem, now is it? We got a painting scrap, and we weighed cats. Okay. Let's go find Ramon. Have no oh, is this Ramon? It oh, yep, it is. Good day, Ramon. How are you feeling today? Fit as a fiddle, Professor. Perhaps even vivacious as a violin. <laughs> that awful fatigue from last week seems like it never happened. As you can see, I'm bursting with energy, and my skin is soft as a baby's. I feel like a teenager again. Is that so? That's good to hear. He doesn't seem to remember what happened yesterday, does he? He has no idea. Oh, wrong voice. He has no idea what happened. So, what's our next move? We shall respect the inspector's wishes and leave the murder case alone, Luke. It's as Inspector Chelmy said, solving crime is the police's job. Besides, something tells me that the case, this case, and the golden apple are more related than we suspect. Next, that intuition of yours talking again, isn't it, Professor? First and foremost, we need to find a clue that will bring us closer to the golden apple. Perhaps one of Baron Reinhold's relations or close friends can help point us in the right direction. Of course, there's also someone else. Let's see if the family butler has anything to say on the subject. All right, so we're heading back to talk to, uh, we're talking to, what was his name? Damn it, I actually like him. The, be the butler. We're going to go talk to the butler. <laughs> Chapter 5 begin, boy. Save the progress. Of course. Of course. It seems like we're ahead. Uh, We're ahead of the chapters we were streaming one and one but now we're ahead that's dope that's pretty dope all right matthew that's the butler's name let's go talk with matthew all right we gotta head inside we gotta head inside to talk to matthew oh matthew's right here how wonderful Back so soon, Professor. Matthew, I was wondering if you knew anything that could point us in the direction of the Golden Apple. Anything you know would be a great help. For example, did the Baron say anything before he passed away? I'm so sorry to disappoint you, Professor, but the Master never said anything of the sort to me. I very much like to help you in your search, but my duties here prevent me from leaving the grounds. If only Ingrid was around to provide some assistance. I beg your pardon, sir. Ingrid? It's been years since she left, but Ingrid used to work as a servant in the mansion. She was Flora's nurse, and she often helped me with my work. Matthew! Yes, madam. I'll be right there. Please excuse me, sir. The lady calls. If you're curious about Ingrid, why not pay her a visit and talk to her yourself? Let's see, at this time of day, I'd imagine she's out walking around by the general store. Please do me a favor and tell her that Matthew sends his regards. Certainly, I'll be sure to pass on your message. Thank you for all your help, Matthew. Isn't Ingrid that sweet old lady we passed by before? Ah, okay, okay. That was the very first woman we met, wasn't it? I believe so. Indeed. We also saw her in that picture of young Flora. Come, Luke. Let's go find the old girl. Off we go, then. The general store is just outside the mansion, right? We'll be there in no time. All right, let's go find Ingrid. That's weird. Now we gotta, now we gotta go meet this woman. If I remember correctly, she almost didn't let us in. This mass, this madness. Here she is. What is this? What's that on the ground? It looks like a scrap of note paper. What's it say, Luke? Well, let's see here. Ahem. It's just terrible. Lady Violet has an awful case of the flu and hasn't left her bed for days. I'm no doctor, so I can't think of any way to help her. Oh, what to do? What to do? 
Lady Violet? Oh, this journal must be talking about Baron Reinhold's first wife. My heart is heavy as I write these words. The loss of his wife has completely crushed the boss. If only there was something I could do to help. He walks around looking like he's had the wind knocked out of him. And that's the end. Gosh, whoever wrote this must have cared an awful lot for the Baron and his family. Hmm. Alright, let's talk to Ingrid. What's going on, little fire? Welcome to the stream. We just started chapter 5 of... What is this? Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Oh, goodness me, if it isn't Mr. Um, Mr. Layabout, was it? The name's Layton, madam. That's right, Mr. Layton. What can I do for you, sir? Earlier, we were talking with the butler at Reinhold Manor, and he mentioned you used to work there. We'd very much like to hear anything you might know about the Baron. Watch, watch, it's coming, it's coming. Sure, I'll tell you anything as long as you solve this puzzle. We know how this song goes. We've heard this before. Heavens me, you want to hear about the Baron? I'm afraid the only stories I have are from when I worked at the manor, and that was ages ago. That would be ideal, ma'am. Would you mind telling us one? All right. Well, I suppose I could tell you about the Baron and his former wife. The way Master Reinhold and his wife would carry on, they almost seemed to be like children. You never see a man so in love as Master Reinhold was. When she passed away, Flora was all the Baron had to remember her by. So he raised that little girl with all the love a child could want. Things he'd bring home for her. Toys from all over the world and teddy bears as big as yourself. He was in high spirits in those days. He really wanted to give her two parents worth of affection. Oh, he's talking about the, the girl. I was to say, excuse me. So where has Flora gone? Your guess is as good as mine, sir. I have no clue where that girl went. She left the mansion well after I stopped working for the Reinholds. Some say Lady Dahlia put Flora on the street to keep the family riches to herself, but that's nonsense. After all, the Baron cared about Flora so much, I can't imagine that he'd allow something like that. You know, you just reminded me of a puzzle. Okay, okay, it's not, it's not. Ooh, ooh, I was feeling it. The grave of the Baron's late wife is located in the manor garden. I wonder who takes care of it now. The Baron's former wife is buried in the garden. Thank you, madam. You've been extremely helpful. Luke, let's head back to the manor. I have a hunch that the grave might hold the clue we've been looking for. All right, back to the manor. We're getting the runaround. This guy, if this guy has a puzzle, I'll be okay with that. His puzzles are dope. His puzzles are dope. Hey there, Professor. I bet you it'll solve my puzzle. I'm right, aren't I? Yeah, of course I'm right. Wait, what? She is dead? Yes, uh, the former wife. He has, uh, he had two wives, I believe. There was one. And then there was another. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> the longest path is worth 50, 50 picarats. Here we go. Time to bring out the big guns. We're two and two so far today. Let's do this one. Let's go to work. Okay. Two boys are playing a game in which the goal is to take the longest route possible from point A to point B, as shown on the map below. The only rule is that no section of the road can be traversed more than once. What course should they take in order to cover the longest distance possible between point A and point B? I mean, I guess this, is, this isn't so much a puzzle as it is just tricky, you know? Let's figure it out. They got to go from A to B. So let's see. We can go this way. Oh, it's measuring. It's measuring the intersections. Okay. Understood. Understood. Didn't I do this? No, I didn't do this one yet. I did something very similar. It was very similar, but it wasn't this one. Let's see. How about if we bring it back down this way? We whip through here. And I think this is the longest path possible. This is just assuming. I think this is the longest path possible. Um, How did I come to that? If you take a look. 
everything is on was that one two three four five it's on one of five one two three four five yeah it's on one of five different lines going vertically and horizontally or horizontally and vertically this is one this is one this is two this is three this is four and this is five and then the same thing goes across one two three four five they're all equidistant they're all equidistant that means every single intersection is equidistant so like if this was an intersection this would be the same distance from here to here from here to here and from here to here they're all that far apart from each other now using that as like a tool you can figure out how to add things like for example the same spot from let me see I'm, i'll clear it because i can kind of see where i need to go let's see if i can no i can't just start there i have to okay that's fine here to here is two let's see is there any way else i can show i can show it better and eh, ignore this line ignore this line i can show it better here from here to here is one so we add one we're gonna add one to like this fictional point value that we have to solve this one this is also one so now we're at two you follow do you follow what i'm getting at this is another one so that's three and the longest path is whatever path can get you the longest i'm sorry the highest number possible using using uh that pattern using that that trick so let's see i'm gonna assume that this is the longest i'm pretty certain it can be done either this way or it can be flipped around because the the puzzle is reflected it's, it's it's a 180 reflection so let's see this would be two because this would be one if if it had an intersection here here's two and then two more before five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I don't think it could be done any better than that one. And I was looking at the stream to figure out the path that I had before. I don't think it'd be done any better. Don't ask how I came up with this. I've been doing like these middle tricks in my mind. I've been making puzzles harder like this uh since middle school I, can't, I i don't think i could explain this one any better than i just tried there we go critical thinking is the key to success we're three for three today i want to roll nice work speaking of leisurely strolls have you been outside today if, if it's sunny why not go for a nice walk and eh, leave me alone leave me alone <laughs> Let's see. I don't know why I don't like. I'm guessing don't like Chill Me. Chill Me is is he's an interesting character. He's really interesting. Bang up job there, Professor. Even that puzzle didn't phase you, huh? Of course not. You're a pro. Yep, you're a real piece of work, Prof. You know that. Of course you do. You're a scholar after all. Another painting scrap. We're gonna get that. We're gonna uh get that puzzle done, boy. We're gonna get that puzzle done thing i thought there was a thing i think i already got that one the place looks closed all right we need to find the grave at the manor so we're heading back to the manor oh oh it's uh it's matthew hey matthew what's going on hmm? oh look it's matthew good day professor were you able to track down ingrid yes we did in fact we were just speaking with her and I mean no disrespect, but she said the grave of the Baron's late wife lies on these grounds. Do you have any knowledge of this? Lady Violet's grave, sir? I was just about to visit her myself. Would you mind if we... Oh, wrong voice. Would you mind if we came along to take a look? Not in the slightest. Right this way. Oh, the grave is, is down here. That's dope. Here's the entrance, sirs. Please watch your step on the way in. 
That's dope. That's dope. This is Lady Violet's grave. Gosh, this place is really nice. It's not creepy at all. The late Baron, rest his soul, told me to keep this place in proper order, and I have tried to do so. That's, that's a nice rendering of that uh of a statue. Here lies Violet, my one true love. His statue looks so much like Lady Dahlia, it's hard to believe it's someone else. Back when Flora was just a tiny little thing, Lady Violet used to take her to the park in town. Flora? Who is... Uh, question. I don't think I've been paying enough attention. Who's Flora? <laughs> Who's Flora? Is that Dahlia's real name? I don't think I've been paying attention enough to catch that one, you know? Some of the flowers in the garden grew from the ones Flora planted here for her mother. Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you about the Baron's journal. It should still be on the desk in Madame's room. It's possible that it might contain some information that could aid your search for the golden apple. My thanks, Matthew. I'll be sure to give it a once over later. Now then, Luke, we best head back to Reinhold Manor. Dope. Find the journal in Dahlia's room. We got this. We're going to just walk right in there, take that journal, kick open the doors, and be out. Let's see. Let's head up the stairs into Dahlia's room. The journal, we, we have to find it, right? Like, we've never seen it before. It's not like, go get it. We have to we have to actually find it. Let's see, it's not there. Is it in the drawer here? Nope. Is that it? That a big old journal on the table? Yep, sure is. This must be the journal that Matthew spoke of. I have to oh, wrong voice. I keep doing that. I have to admit, he seems to know where everything in the manor is. There's something about reading someone else's journal that just doesn't seem proper to me. However, the investigation must continue, so... I wonder if the golden apple is edible. I don't think the golden apple is a literal apple. I feel like it is like an heirloom. It's, it's, it's something apple-shaped, but it's, it's actually meant to be something else. I feel like a golden apple wouldn't be a thing. Wouldn't be like a, an actual apple. It'd be, it'd be a trickery device, you know? The craftsmanship of it is simply remarkable. It reminds me of when my sweet Violet, of my sweet Violet when she was alive. What do you suppose it refers to? Flora doesn't like the thing at all. I've seen her run away from it on multiple occasions. Recently, she spends more time playing by dear Violet's grave than anywhere else. I'm sad to say I doubt Flora will ever take to it. I can't blame her as I've changed his memory. I felt terrible forcing that change on Flora, but I just couldn't bear to see it like that anymore. Violet, there can never be another you. You are my first, my last, and my only. Changed? It's memory? I'm not sure what the Baron means, but this is clearly vital information here. I collapsed some days ago and have been bedridden ever since. I feel as though I have fla failed Flora as a father. I can only hope that when I am gone, the people of the village look after Flora and care for her as I did. He must have been terribly ill. It seems I am not long for this world and the time has come for me to say goodbye to my little Flora. I've left everything in Bruno's care now. Flora, I pray you find happiness in this life. I've disclosed the location of the secret place in a note that I've left with an old friend. It is my most fervent hope, my most fervent hope, that the seeker of the golden apple finds it and grants my dearest wish. Professor, Baron Reinhold's old friend. We must seek out this person, Luke. But Professor, how can we possibly find that person with nothing but this journal to go on? Ha <laughs> ha, it's like I always say, Luke, any good investigation starts on the street. We'll just have to ask everyone in town about the matter. What? I mean, of course. You're absolutely right, Professor. Let's get to it. Of course, any good investigation also needs direction. 
Let's start off by asking Ingrid a few questions. She seems to know a great deal about Baron Reinhold. Okay, let's be out. Let's go find Ingrid once more. Let's see, Lo Fire, why don't you trust uh why don't you trust Chim tell tell me? Tell tell me? Why don't you trust tell me? You can trust him as easily as it is to say his name. <laughs> you can trust him. Oh look who it is! Professor Ladle, was it? The name's Layton, madam. Oh that's right, Professor Layton! All that talk about the mansion we did last time got me reminiscing, so I decided to stop by for a visit. But enough about me. By the look on your face, it seems that you have something you want to ask me. As a matter of fact, I do. Do you happen to know who Baron Reinhold considered his close friends? His friends, you say? Well, he wasn't exactly what you call a social butterfly. I'm sorry, that's really all I knew of his friends. Oh, wait a moment. I do believe... I saw that Zapone fellow pay a visit to the mansion a few times. Professor, could she be referring to that man we met? Ah, yes, that gentleman with the fancy little mustache. We should ask him if he knows anything. I would wager he's still hanging about the fork in the road just beyond the clock tower. All right. Nice job reminding me where he is, because I was sure about to go the opposite direction. <laughs> Let's go meet up with uh, Zapone. The game's actually moving, you know? It's moving ahead. It's progressing. Uh, let's see. Past the clock tower. Oh, it's these two. They're going to have the hardest puzzles again. I'm going to do that now just so we have less puzzles to uh to show up. To show up at the end of this chapter. Man, my brain stopped. Remember the evil guy? I think it's Tim Chimley, so that's why I don't trust him. Fair? Fair accusation. Fair enough. You never see those two in the same location. Key, good afternoon, mister. Hey, I'll tell you a secret if you solve this puzzle for me. It's about a girl who's about to have her birthday. Now, all these puzzles are themed, more or less. They typically have something to do with the person that's giving them. So I wonder if it's near Lucy's birthday. This one's 60 Picarots. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't have done this one. Uh, we're three and three so far. Birthday girl, puzzle 66. When asked about her birthday, a young woman gives the following information. The day after tomorrow, I turned 22, but I was still 19 on New Year's Day this year. When is her birthday? Oh, that one's easy. That one's easy. I wonder if you guys uh, understand this puzzle. The day after tomorrow... I turned 22, but I was still 19 on New Year's Day last year. Oh, wait, maybe this one isn't as easy as I thought it was. Let's see. On New Year's Day, I was 19. The day after tomorrow, I turned 22. Hang on, my numbers are off. Let's see. Last year, I was 19. In two days, I'll be 22. So today's the 21st. I'm sorry. That, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Never mind. The day is not the 21st. Let's see. The day after tomorrow, I turn 22. So in two days, I'll be 22 years old. So you should be 21 now. But on New Year's Day... Last year... Let me see. I need to write this one out because like it's, it's got too much figurative. I need to actually put it in writing. Let's see. So we were 19... We were 19... On January 1st last year. And then today, let's see, last year. Let me write that. I feel like that's important. Then there's today, tomorrow, and then the day after tomorrow, I'll be 22. When is her birthday? Let's 
Day after tomorrow, I turn 22. But I was still 19 on New Year's Day last year. I want At first, I wanted to say her birthday's on Leap Day. But that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. It'll be off by one number. When asked about her birthday, a young woman... First off, when asked about her birthday, a young woman gives the following information. Why can't you just answer the question? Why can't you just answer? They, they, they want to know something about you. Let's see, Little Fire saying Jan first. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's one hard. This one is hard. I was still 19 on New Year's Day last year. I was 19 on New Year's Day last year. So then last year, she started the year at age 19. By the end of the year, she should be 20. But today she's 21 and tomorrow she'll be 22. How is that possible? That's like that's the question I'm solving. I'm asking in my head. How is that possible? That last year on New Year's Day, she was still 19. That rules new that rules leap day out. Because she would have to be 18, turn 19, 20, 21 on this leap year. But that, is, that still doesn't even make sense. 19 last year, 21 now. She should be 21 now. It, the, the puzzle doesn't say she is 21. She should be 21. She's, she's 19 last year, and in a few days she'll be 22. If she was 19 last year, then no matter what day her birthday was last year, she should turn 20. But she should be 21 now if in two days she turns 22. When is her birthday? Yeah, it says it on the picture, but that's the, you can't go by the picture because what they do sometimes with these puzzles is deliberately give you information in the picture to use that wasn't given in the puzzle. You want to focus on the puzzle, not the picture. When is her birthday? Is that a trick question? Is that a trick question? When is her birthday? In two days? Is that the answer? <laughs> I'm going to use a hint. I'm going to use a hint. I feel like the first hint... It, the first hint has to help me because I haven't figured anything out. What's going on, Meteor Cloud? We're solving puzzles, kind of. Here's a hint. The first thing you should do is determine what day this exchange is taking place. The woman says she's turning 22 in two days, so right now she must be 21. We figured that out. We figured that out. Hopefully these two points will give you something to go on. Let me see. So last year, the very first day of last year, she was 19. Which would mean that her birthday happened sometime last year and she turned 20. But the problem is that for her to turn 22 in two days, she has to be 21 now. That's the problem that I'm getting at. She has to be 21 right now, but on New Year's Day, she was 19. And then she turned 20 that year. There's a there's a year that's missing for some reason. Let me blow another coin. I'll blow another hint. It's okay. The woman will turn 22 in two days, and her birthday, like all days, lasts but one day. She also mentions her age last year. A year, on the other hand, is much larger period of time to deal with in order for her statement to be true her birthday needs to fall on a particular day think about how the above two facts help narrow this possibilities i'm not seeing it i'm not seeing it the only way she was 19 on new year's day last year i'm looking at it from the very top of the day and from the very bottom of the day very bottom of the day, she has to be 19 on New Year's Day. 
top of the day. She's she's 19 as soon as the ball drops. And then like if she was born at like 8 a.m. But that still doesn't help. It still doesn't help. Think about above two facts. Okay. The one will turn 22 in two days. Okay. So this is her age right now. Like I've got my new car. I know you guys can't see it. Hang on. I think I think Little Fire got it with January 2nd. Let me see. She'll be 22 in two days. Oh, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I think I did it. I think I figured out the specific day. Give me give me a second to run it through my brain. Okay, so let's let's stop saying last year and let's assign years. It doesn't matter what year we assign as long as they all make sense together. She was 19 on January 1st, 2016. Let's go ahead and see that. She was 19 on January 1st, 2016. In two days, that uh, that's, in 2016 was last year. In two days, she'll turn 22. So if that was last year and in two days she'll turn 22, then she'll turn two days, I'm sorry, she'll turn 22 Whatever day it is in 2017. So all of these times here are 2017. Okay. Now. 2017. She also needs to be 20. Now there's now now I can clearly see this problem. January 1st, 2016, she was 19 years old. In 2017, she should be 20 years old. I figured it out. Her birthday is... What's the last day of the year? December 31st? Her birthday is... is December 30th, 2017. I'm sorry. Today is 2000. Ugh, ugh, sorry, I've, I've, I've said too much stuff. Okay, for her to be 19 on January 1st of any given year. And then in two days, she'll be 22. Her birthday has to be January 2nd. So then that would mean that today... It's 2017, uh, is, uh, December 30th. I don't think I'm explaining this right. I don't think I'm explaining it right. Like, I can see it in my head. It makes perfect sense in my head. I don't think I'm explaining it right. Let me see if I can write it out better. 31st, Jan, January, January 1st. Does that work? Because then that would be 18. That would be 18. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Let me see if I can make sense. January 1st, she would turn... January 1st, she's 19. As that year goes on, she has her 20th birthday. 2016. 2016. Shoot, I messed up somewhere. I messed up. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Did I mess up by like one day? I think I did. Give me a second. January 1st. Then on the 2nd, she turns 20. On the 2nd. Yes. Okay. So today, the, the, the day in this scenario where she's answering this question that was asked, where she says, the day after tomorrow, I'll turn 22, blah, blah, blah. That day is December 31st. Two days from now, she turns 22. The only way that's possible if her is if her birthday is January 2nd. Lil Fire is 100% right. I think, I think that's right. I think that's right. The only way that works is if her birthday is January 2nd. I'm, I'm going to go with that. Okay. It, it does give me this way. Good. January 2nd. So the month would be one and the day would be two. There we go.
Yep. Yep. That was good. He Every figured it out before I did. Answer. That's good. <laughs> We're three for three. Four for four. I don't know how many puzzles we've done today, but we've done them all. We've done them all <laughs> in one shot. There we go. That's that's the perfect explanation. Let's see. So last year on New Year's Day, the 19th, then she had her birthday that year and turned 20. So then following it up, there it is. There it is. That's perfect. That was great. That was a good puzzle. Her birthday is January 2nd and your conversation with her. That was the trick. We had to figure out what day we were having this conversation with her. That was the hard part. As you can see, yep. Good job. Little fire. Little fire. You get the thumbs up award for the day. <laughs>